Welcome to the panel on informed visibility. My name is Angela Agnostopoulos and I'm the Vice President of Gray Hair Software. And Judy? Hi, my name is Judy Kalis. I'm a product specialist with Pitney Bowes. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about informed visibility, some of the things that uh, are coming up that are new. We're going to talk about some concerns. And so let's start off by just defining uh, what are these new scan events that are going to be part of uh, uh, the informed visibility. So Judy, can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So we're very excited about uh, the amount of data that we'll be gaining through the new informed visibility program and uh, some new definitions uh, that uh, we'll be hearing about and that you've heard about at the forum are assumed and logical scan events. So today we're um, informed, or IMB Tracing subscribers get um, piece level data based off of actual scan events. We're adding uh, two additional types of, um, of information to the uh, uh, data that's available. So assume scans are going to occur when um, a container or a tray is scanned and there are obviously additional uh, pieces uh, that are um, associated with that scan. And so we're, the assumption is that if the tray was scanned, that the pieces are in the system as well. The logical events are going to be more um, based on what happens next, the, the logical next event. So for instance, uh, piece scans that occur in an SCF um, uh, into the carrier's tray. The next logical event is that they're placed onto um, a truck and that they're being uh, delivered locally into the neighborhood. And so um, one of the uh, most exciting uh, logical scan events is geofencing. And maybe Angelo could tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. I mean, geofencing is a pretty uh, interesting topic. And what it means is that the Postal Service took the database that they have of every address in the country and they drew an invisible fence with latitude and longitude coordinates around every house and in the case of where there are cluster boxes or curb delivery and that they've geofenced around those areas. The idea being is, is they, as they use their new scanning technology and as they're going down the street delivering mail, there are breadcrumbs of the latitude and longitude coordinates transmitted in real time to the Postal Service Headquarters servers every minute and so they're capturing that information. So now what can you do with that? Well you can take that information now and associate it to the mail that's in their bag or in their truck to be delivered that day and now we have a new event that we were never ever able to capture before which is delivery at the door. So what can you do with that? Well you can do a, a variety of different things including, uh, as an example, sending somebody an email to say, hey, run out to your mailbox, your new catalog is there. Uh, you could take some additional action around omni-channel. Uh, you can uh, send a banner ad, as an example, on their mobile device for one of the sites, you know, Facebook or whatever it is that they're visiting to, and, and tie it in so that you have multiple touch points, which now takes mail and connects it up to the social and digital world, and you're able to uh, to do some of these things. So with all of that, there's a lot of information, and so we really need to talk a little bit about provisioning. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that and what the process will look like? That's another huge change that we're excited about because not only um, are we getting more data, but we'll be getting, we'll have more options for how to get that data. So with the new INFORM uh, Visibility Program, post office will have options to push the data to us uh, there'll be options for us to pull it. There'll be options uh, to determine what, which um, features you want to receive. And so we're, we're very excited about having a lot more data and having multiple ways of getting the data and uh, getting it more frequently. There'll be many more options with regard to how often you want the data to be, uh, to be received. So, Angelo, maybe we could talk a little bit, or you could talk a little bit about the hierarchy. Sure. So, you know, when we talk about all of this new data, the one, the one important point uh, that we want to make here is, is that today, some of this information, like 
the pallet or container scans and the tray scans, we don't get in real time or even near real time because it takes you know a minimum of 24 to 48 hours for that data to be fulfilled. Well, under this new platform, there's going to be a lot of horsepower behind it, and we'll be able to get that really, really quick um, in near real time because that's what you need in some cases to uh, to manage uh, to manage this information. So one of the things that's changing about this information that's coming is uh, what we call the hierarchy of the way that the data is received. So I'll give you a couple of examples. So the first example is, is if you're a transportation company and you're the one that's transporting the pallets and mail to the Postal Service, what you'll have access to is the appointment closeout information so that you know when your driver showed up and dropped off the mail. And you'll also have access to things like uh, container scans so you'll be able to, to get all of that information. But you won't be able to see anything below that level because as part of the supply chain, you really shouldn't have access to that. When you work your way down and you look at the mail service provider, which actually put the mail together, they'll be able to see additional events like tray scans, SAC scans, et cetera. And so they'll be able to uh, have access to that information. And we're like our companies as an example, where we track down to an individual piece level we're not only going to get the individual piece scan so we can see the mail moving through the network, but as, as a hierarchy, we'll be able to see anything above that. So we'll be able to see tray scans, pallet scans, as well as the closeout information because we're, we're kind of in, in the details of all of this information and want to be able to produce the reporting that our customers expect and, and want to see, as well as some of the triggering technologies that we were talking about before uh, that... Uh, uh, you can do around social and digital and, and some of those things. But with all of that, there's a lot of dissemination of information, and I, I think there's some concerns there. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? There are some concerns. So suddenly we have access to a lot more information than ever before and uh, ways to distribute it to different parties. Um, but one concern that we do have as an industry is with regard to how we establish um, and create permissions uh, to access uh, that data. So right now, the proposed method to um, set that up is through the, the Business Customer Gateway. And uh, with the BSA, or the uh, administrative role, pretty much defaulting to the person that gets there first. So some of the concerns that the industry has about this is that in an enterprise, um, environment there are a lot of different people touching that data or have need have a need for different types of data so how do we manage and educate and communicate to the user base about the right way to access and sign up on the gateway and more importantly I think is that administrative role and it's a very critical role and we need to definitely have a good plan for communicating and organizing around signing up for that and, and allowing that level of access. And not only that, but as excited as we are about this, uh, all of this abundance of data, there are some real concerns about managing it that we think um, industry participants will want to consider. Um, considering that you're not only going to get uh, scan events, but assume scan events. So, um, for not only will you be getting, for instance, uh, with bundles, uh, the top of bundle scan, but all of the pieces that are in that bundle now will be available to you. So, we we are um, a little concerned uh, that people be aware and prepared um, as to how they they want to handle all that data. And Angelo, maybe you'd like to. Um, to focus on that just a little bit more, some of the sure. different considerations there. So I was thinking about this the other day, and you know, when you look at the, the information that we're collecting today, it's uh, there's a lot of information, so you can liken it to maybe drinking out of a garden hose. So once this new information becomes available, it exponentially increases the amount of information, so it's like trying to drink out of a fire hose. So what does that mean? It means you, you're going to need very serious storage, you're going to need very serious computing power, and because the data is much more complex and much more robust, you need better analytics to figure out how to visualize that information, whether it's on a heat map, whether it's on a report, whether it's on a data extract or some of these things. Now, 
the other the other kind of cool thing that we haven't talked about yet is, is uh, with all of this information, there's going to be some additional things that we're going to be able to get for diagnostics. And so I'll give you a quick example of that. One of the things that we've been asking for the Postal Service on the peace level data for a long time is uh, machine ID. Uh, so some people say, well, why do you care what machine the mail was run on? Well, if there are any problems, it helps us to go back to the Postal Service and whether we call their operations or their help desk and say, you know, you have a machine that's configured incorrectly. We know it's in Des Moines, Iowa, but it was shipped from Wisconsin and it still has the Wisconsin configuration and it looks like our mail is being sorted in Wisconsin when we know it's not. So uh, we'll be able to get some additional diagnostics not only to help ourselves and our customers, but also in, in our interactions uh, with the Postal Service. So really, bottom line is, is this stuff is going to be in a state of flux as new pieces of information become available. And maybe talk a little bit about that. You know, what is what is that going to do to the industry? So um, I think uh, the industry definitely will want to consider um, things like, um, you know, what capacity do I have to archive the data that's being delivered to me? Because having this additional, these additional elements, if you will could be associated to uh, a critical piece of first class mail that at some point you need to go back and prove that you placed into the mail stream. And so having, for instance, the machine ID available would give you one more additional um, element to tie that back to the legitimacy of, of the post office having custody of that mail and having processed it through their system. So that says that the mailer has met their requirement to yep. place the mail into the mail stream. So sh should we talk a little bit about what these people, uh, some of these customers of ours dread out there, which are the scorecards and how this data can, can help build a defense for them? <laughs> Ab well, absolutely, because uh, that's uh, a huge concern. I know it's a concern for us, um, and that's a moving target, and when you talk about a program in flux, definitely the scenario with the scorecard would, would fit that description. Yeah, so just uh, for those wondering what, what we're talking about, uh, the Postal Service is going to be putting out uh, scorecards. They've been out for a while, but uh, they're going to go live in the July time frame with one of the scorecards, and there's others to come, and within those, there are tolerances that if you exceed there's going to be uh, assessments involved. So one of the things that our customers have been asking us for is all of this data out of informed visibility, as well as external information that we collect from logistics providers, from the mail service providers, et cetera, that uh, we put that in escrow, especially when you look at things like undocumented pieces, which I don't know, it's like a four letter word nowadays, but um, so we look at this information because one of the things that'll happen is, is let's say one of our customers exceeds their scorecard, they're gonna wanna be able to do queries into our systems right. to be able to look at this stuff and say, well, you know, uh, did uh, my service provider really have a problem or is this a data issue? Because one of the things that we run into uh, uh, periodically is the postal service systems might go down, they'll be down for a period of time when the systems come back up, they have us resubmit the electronic data, but not always does that information get backfilled. But the nice thing is, is we're collecting this stuff in real time, and so we have kind of that escrowed information. And so I think, you know, that'll be good, and we'll, we'll be able to help our customers with some of that stuff. Do you agree? Absolutely. So when you're talking about scorecards, you're also talking about potential penalties, fines, uh, thresholds that, that are not supposed to be exceeded. So this is your audit trail, if you will, mm -hmm. and we're very happy to have a lot more information to support um, and, and analyze the trip that um, our mail took through the Postal Service, but we, we feel like there's a lot of considerations and a very aggressive timeline uh, on the part of the Post Office to get this rolled out. Yeah, and Julie, talk a little bit about the session you did yesterday around some of the regulatory concerns. Uh, how does this data help uh, in some of the regulatory industries like uh, healthcare and financial and insurance and that? Oh, it's tremendous. So, healthcare, financial, um, and um, and property and casualty um, insurance in particular are very concerned about custody of mail and being able to prove that they placed their mail into the mail stream at, to meet the regulatory uh, notification time. 
So with the uh, additional scans, we're, we're very focused on that initial scan. And if the initial scan doesn't happen, we need to start looking, doing some research as to why it didn't happen and where that male might be. Additionally, those additional um, elements, like the machine ID, like having some of the assumed and logical information, will help us to build our story and support our proof of mail, if you will, of uh, discussion that uh, the regulatory statutes were met and that the mailer is in compliance with regard to the, the notification requirements. So we certainly welcome this and we welcome all the additional options that we're, uh, we're looking to, to get out of the new program. Uh, and lastly, one of, the, one of the last things we wanted to talk about is around what's called in-home date management. Right. And really what you have is you have retail customers as an example that might want the flyer to hit in-home by a specific date because it might be tied to a weekend sale. And as the Postal Service further consolidates uh, their operations and as they're changing the way that uh, mail is sorted and mail is transported and delivered and stuff, it becomes a little bit more of a challenge because there's a lot more variability into the way that mail is moving through their system. And so how can we use some of this data to, to help them predict some of that? Well, definitely the geofencing again is, is going to be tremendous in terms of any type of omni-channel application or um, additional touch points uh, that the industry is very interested in participating in, but um, has not really um, had um, anything more than an educated guess, if you will, or um, a, a predictability uh, assessment in the past. So the frequency of the data and the uh, almost to the door nature of the data that's being provisioned is going to have a huge impact, I think, on yeah. that. Yeah, because one of the things I was thinking about is, is let's say that they're sending out a flyer for a weekend sale. Right. There's a snowstorm and mail is just stuck at a facility. We would know that. We could pass information and they could send an email or maybe like an E uh, type of a flyer to uh, their customers and we can even help them. I mean, they don't even need to know their email address, you know, through our through partnerships and that. We can we can provide that information. I mean, you can even send them text messages. I don't, I don't know that you want to do that, but uh, you're able to do a lot of things. So really bottom line is, is this information as it evolves becomes much, much more powerful and it's much better integrated, especially when you're dealing with millennials and some people that want to consume some of this information uh, in a variety of different ways. And as we all know, you know, the more touch points you have, the, the better it is and the more likely that your message is, uh, is coming across. Um, any, any closing thoughts? No, I mean, all of that is, rolls up to uh, a lot of anticipation for the new Informed Visibility Program, uh, a lot of uh, concern about the timelines, uh, the educational component, getting the communication out to the industry, uh, fine-tuning uh, and maybe better defining the access, and uh, definitely on the back end, getting uh, our, uh, as industry, our systems upgraded and ready to handle all of that data. Um, so with that, we uh, thank you for your attention and hope that you found this uh, helpful.